What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. Today we are checking out one of the latest phones from Xiaomi called the Mi 6X. So Xiaomi released a whole bunch of phones this year already but most of them were budget phones. Well this isn't exactly a budget phone, this is more like their mid-range device and if you want to buy this phone you're going to have to spend somewhere around $300. So for that price we get a very premium looking phone that's mostly made out of metal and glass but I have to say their design is getting a bit boring because they're kind of using the same design for all the phones that they make. So it doesn't matter if you're buying a budget phone or a more um, expensive phone, they all kind of look the same. If you look at this phone and the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5, well you can barely tell the difference. I mean there are a couple of small differences here and there, but for the untrained eye this might as well be the exact same phone. So that's what I'm talking about, they should have made this um, mid-range phone a bit different from the budget phones. For specs we get a Snapdragon 660 CPU, this is a mid-range CPU, but a CPU that gets great performance and the Antutu benchmark and the Geekbench 4 will only confirm that. That CPU is also paired with 6 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage and out of that 64 gigs of internal storage you have about 51 gigs left after the operating system but you have to keep in mind that the phone cannot take an SD card. Aside from that we get a 5.99 inches IPS screen that has a 18 by 9 screen ratio and a 1080p resolution. The viewing angles are great, the colors um, look good but um, you cannot compare this screen with the screen that you'd find on a Samsung device. So it's a nice enough screen for a mid-range device but um, definitely not the best screen that I've seen for a phone. The touch sensitivity is on par with all the other high-end devices that I've seen from other companies and the screen can register up to 10 touches at the same time. The screen is also covered by Gorilla Glass 3 so that means that it's not gonna get scratched that easily. And just before we go any further would you be kind enough to press that like button it's gonna help this video quite a lot and maybe subscribe if you haven't done so already. And going back to the phone specifications, we also have a non-removable 3010 mAh battery. Now if you'd be to compare the battery life to other budget phones from Xiaomi, the battery life is not gonna be great because most budget phones from Xiaomi get a 4000 mAh battery. Now if you'd be to compare the battery life with other flagship devices from Samsung, LG and even Apple, well the battery life is on par with those. So you're gonna be able to make it through an entire day and get between 6 hours and 8 hours of screen time, which isn't bad but it's not exceptional. And we're moving on to the phone's body, so as I mentioned earlier the back of the phone is made out of metal, we have some antennas at the top and at the bottom but the phone looks and feels great um, to touch. The phone is also very slim and it only weighs about 170 grams. Now even though the back looks very sleek we have a huge camera bump and this is probably the biggest camera bump that I've seen on any smartphone. So if you lay this phone flat on any surface the phone will rock left, right, left, right and it makes it um, kind of impossible to type if you have the phone laying flat on a desk or anything like that. Now you can always use that case that comes in the box and that makes things much better but um, yeah the camera bump is pretty big. On the back we also have the fingerprint scanner and the positioning of the fingerprint scanner is perfect so every time you pick up the phone your finger just goes on that um, fingerprint scanner. The fingerprint scanner is accurate 10 out of 10 times and it's extremely quick as well so every time you touch it the screen comes on right away. On the right hand side of the phone we have the power button and the volume keys, the buttons are also made out of metal and they are very nice and clicky and at the top we have IR blaster and we also have a secondary microphone. Now that IR blaster can be used to control your TV but me personally I don't use it that much because I forget that I have it 99% of the time. And moving to the left hand side of the phone there we have the slot for the SIM card so this device can take two SIM cards at the same time. And moving all the way to the bottom there we have the microphone we also have the USB-C port and the speaker. The speaker sounds extremely loud and much louder than a lot of other phones that I've heard in the past but here is a quick sample so you can hear how the speaker sounds. That USB-C port supports OTG and the phone also supports fast charging, so charging the device from 0 to 100 is done in about an hour and 25 minutes, so pretty quick. And it's time to talk about camera, so first of all on the front of the device just above the screen and next to the notification light we have a 20 megapixel front facing camera with the f1.8. 
The front facing camera has a portrait mode, so just like we've seen on the Google Pixel or the iPhone or the Samsung Galaxy S9, and the, the picture quality from the portrait mode is decent, I would say 90% of the time. Of course, the pictures aren't as good as the pictures that um, we've seen on the Google Pixel, but they are better than a lot of other phones um, that I tried in the past. So all these are examples of uh, pictures that I took with this device. The regular pictures that you're gonna take with a front facing camera are super sharp um, if you have plenty of light, but the dynamic range isn't the best out there. I mean, it's better in some pictures than in other, but definitely not the best um, that I've seen. And uh, I'm comparing this mostly with the Google Pixel, which is the flagship device from Google. But overall, the pictures that you're gonna take um, during the day are extremely sharp. As for the selfies that you're gonna take in low light world, those ones are better than a lot of other phones that I tried in the past. Not perfect, but definitely good enough so you can share them on um, social media. So overall, the front facing camera from this device, it's one of the best that I tried on any mobile device. And we are moving on to the rear cameras and I'm gonna go ahead and say the rear cameras are exceptionally good for a phone around $300. So first of all, we have a 12 megapixel camera with the f1.8 and a 20 megapixel camera with the f1.8. So the phone can record in 4K and we also have electronic image stabilization for the 4K recordings. However, the image stabilization isn't that great. And what you're seeing right now, it's a quick recording that I've done with this phone earlier today. But here is another quick clip so you can see how the image stabilization works and how the internal microphone works. Alright, we have a quick 4K video sample um, with the Mi 6X. Um, from the looks of it, we have um, electronic image stabilization. And um, as you can probably see, I'm filming outside and um, there isn't that much wind, so you should only be able to hear my voice. So this is how 4K recording from this device looks like. The camera app is extremely quick at focusing and at taking pictures, so really no complaints about the camera app. And there is also an HDR mode available, there is also a manual mode available, a panoramic mode available and so on. So definitely a great camera app. The pictures that you're gonna take with the portrait mode are exceptionally good as well and on par with other phones like the Google Pixel. And that's not something that I usually say because most phones don't really take that um, great um, looking pictures with the portrait mode. But with this phone you can expect some really good looking pictures whenever you're using the portrait mode. As you can probably see for yourself the edge detection um, is on point so there are some pictures that don't turn up uh, perfect but realistically most phones have the same issue. But overall 90% of the pictures that you're gonna take in the portrait mode turn out extremely good looking. If you take regular pictures those pictures turn out extremely good as well and on par with a lot of flagship devices from um, bigger companies like Samsung, LG and um, Apple. And that's not something that usually happens with phones around $300. So first of all, the pictures are super sharp, the colors are very vibrant and the dynamic range is also good which is not something that happens for budget phones um, too many times. So yeah, the pictures that you're gonna take with this phone look absolutely stunning. And that's not all. Even the pictures that you're gonna take in low light turn up extremely good as well. They're very sharp, very detailed, and uh, overall probably the best pictures that I've seen from any $300 phone and probably even five $600 phones. Now, I'm not gonna say the pictures are as good as the pictures that you're gonna take with the Galaxy S9 Plus, for example, but once again, for a phone at this price range, the pictures are uh, really much the best that I've seen. And we're moving on to the phone's UI. So first of all, the phone comes with Android 8.1 right out of the box. Now, unfortunately, we don't get the Google Play Store pre-installed right out of the box, but it's very simple to do so. And if you don't know how to do it, uh, please watch my unboxing video of this device because I showed you how to do it in there. So on top of that Android 8.1, we also get a um, MIUI 9.5. The software optimization is crazy good and the phone feels faster than my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus in most situations. So whenever you're scrolling in between screens, whenever you're opening apps, closing apps, or pretty much anything that you're gonna do with this phone, the phone doesn't slow down at all. As always, MIUI is packed with features. So you have features like double tap to wake up the screen. You can change the navigation buttons at the bottom of the screen. You have access to a theme store so you can customize the phone however you want it. So a lot of options available for MIUI, mostly MIUI 9.5. Since we have 6 gigs of RAM available, the RAM management is also great, so you can keep a whole bunch of apps running in the background and the phone is not um, gonna close them. And uh, you can even um, use the split screen function from Android 8 and that one works great as well. And uh, you can use two apps at the same time without any lag as well. So I'm very, very impressed um, by this phone's UI. 
Opening apps is on par with most flagship phones these days and most apps that you're going to use with this phone should um, work without any lag. Now, the Facebook app uh, lags a bit mostly whenever you're scrolling through your feed, but um, realistically the Facebook app even lags on my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, so that's something to do with the Facebook app. But most apps that you're going to use um, on this phone should work without any issues. As for the YouTube app, the maximum resolution that you can select for videos is 1080p, but um, all the videos at that resolution um, work extremely smooth and you can even zoom in the video so you can take um, full advantage of that 18 by 9 screen ratio. Gaming is also possible and uh, gaming is done without much lag for most games. I even got to play um, PUBG at the maximum settings. Now at the maximum settings it wasn't perfect. I did notice some lag here and there and the phone got um, somewhat hot. But um, as soon as I lowered the graphics settings to minimum, uh, PUBG worked extremely well. Now other lighter games from the Google Play Store should work without any issues as well. And we are moving on to the GPS unit inside this phone. So the GPS unit is extremely quick. It only takes like half a second for the phone to find your location. Once your location is found, of course, the phone doesn't seem to lose it. And using any navigation app works without any issues. So definitely a great GPS unit inside this phone. As for sensors, we have all the sensors available that you'd find in a flagship device, including a gyroscope. So if you're planning to use this device as a VR headset, that's possible. Now, for a VR headset, you'd be better off to have a better screen resolution, but I guess 1080p is good enough at this time. Connectivity-wise, the phone supports 4G connectivity, we get dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connectivity, but we don't get NFC. And for a phone that's around $300, I was kind of expecting NFC, and I think that would have made the, the phone even better. Here in Canada, I was able to use the phone on 2G, on 3G, and on 4G networks, but definitely check the bands before buying this device and make sure that they actually match um, with your carrier. The speaker on top here gets loud enough so you can hear most conversation, and the call quality is also great. As for the speeds over the 4G network and the dual band Wi-Fi are also good and better than a lot of phones that I tried in the past. And it's time to conclude this video. So the Mi 6X is the best phone that you can buy for $300. There isn't anything else that's um, remotely close to this phone. With this phone you get great performance, you get a great camera on the front and really good cameras on the back, but we don't get the best battery life. I mean, you can still make it through an entire day, but you're not gonna make it through the second day. And we don't get the 3.5mm audio jack, but I guess um, welcome to 2018. So if you're looking for a very good phone, a phone that you can use um, for day to day and uh, a phone that's a great phone to use, um, I think the Mi 6X, um, it's a great choice. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.